Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Get Ready With Me. Uh, you guys quite enjoyed the last one that I did, chit-chatting through my makeup and just talking about the situation here. And I thought I'd do something similar, but not talking about uh, the health pandemic we're going through because we've had enough of that. Let's talk about other things. And I wanted to chat about headaches and Botox, or rather Botox and headaches. But uh, let's get started. I'm gonna start doing my makeup and um, I am going to try to recreate this makeup look by Lisa Eldridge on Cara Delevingne and it's a beautiful springy makeup. I think she did it, yeah, August last year. But it has some yellows and oranges and a pop of pink that I think is really, really pretty and I wanted to recreate it today. So I'm starting by priming my lids, of course. I did my skincare already and I have a um, tinted moisturizer on. So I'm gonna see if I want to actually uh, wear foundation or not. But you can see uh, how I do my skincare in my morning skincare routine uh, video that I posted recently. I'll link it in the cards if you haven't already. For the eyes, I'm going to be using my uh, pastel palette for spring. This is also a video that went up um, maybe last week. And uh, I just wanted to yeah, use more of this. I showed you in that video all of the swatches and uh, things like that. And in this video, it's more about just doing my makeup uh, and trying to look like her. And I will never manage, but that doesn't matter. Also. My new phone, I never showed it to you. I'm still having issues with this gigantic camera not doing what I want it to. But anyways, we'll manage. Um, yeah, so Botox. I have been thinking about getting Botox now for months, maybe a year already. And there's two different reasons. The actual, real, more serious reason is my headache. So as you may know, I have really, really bad uh, cluster, not cluster, sorry, tension headaches. And these are due to stress and they started at the end of 2018, I believe. And I went through the whole of 2019 with them and they were crippling to say the least. So I actually couldn't move from uh, the couch, I couldn't work, I couldn't think, I couldn't do anything, it was horrible. Um, that was uh, a big chunk of the first half of 2019 was spent actually on the couch and that was not fun at all. So I did my research and I did a lot of uh, treatments actually for it, so I went to the physiotherapist, I went to uh, the Chinese doctor who did acupuncture and cupping and uh, gua sha on me. I bought my own gua sha to do uh, every night uh, release of the muscles. Um, and I started a mindfulness trajectory or like a journey with the, the support of a trained coach, let's say. Um, it, she's not a psychologist with a uh, degree in psychology but she was referred I was referred to her by my doctor and uh, uh, yeah so I was doing I did all of these things and after that uh, I still didn't find a an actual solution for my problem I was still really really having really bad headaches not really um, knowing why or finding the right the trigger for it it was just very painful and uh, unexpected it wasn't really attached to any specific um, occasion so what I did in my research further is to find the headache specialist uh, center here in Eindhoven and what they do there is indeed a neurologist visit which I did uh, I did also an MRI and my scans were clear. Uh, so the neurologist just told me you have to live with this forever. I was not happy about that. But one of the other services that they do together with neurology uh, physiotherapy is they have nurse practitioners uh, who give Botox treatments for headaches. Now it has been proved that for migraines, which originate from this muscle or nerve being pinched, I think it's the nerve being pinched by the muscles, that doing Botox helps. And um, 
other type of headaches are originated differently. Uh, mine especially comes from my muscles in my neck all the way from the back to the front. So especially like this guy right here is really, I can barely pinch it without pain, uh, really, really tense um, and all the way back in all the muscles that attach to uh, the base of the skull. And then all of these muscles, all of my head cranium is very tight. Uh, these here under my temples hurt, my jawline hurts. It's not ideal, but it is what it is and I'm living with it. Um, so what I thought was, okay, I could maybe go and see and have a Botox treatment done to uh, help me with my headaches. Um, what I learned is that here in the Netherlands, you can try to get in the hospital for Botox, but it's actually uh, much more expensive, not covered by insurance. Um, what you can do instead is go to someone who does Botox uh, cosmetically because they are all doctors here you cannot um, they're all registered doctors or nurses I think it's doctors or nurses uh, registered to the Dutch National uh, Medical Association or something and they are all um, to the same level as the person who would do it in the hospital for you so I thought of just going to a clinic to go and get a headache treatment for my Botox. So that is part of the offerings of many clinics and I looked it up. What I found was that they do Botox uh, down your neck and in your uh, forehead right here, sometimes in the middle as well. And uh, then I think the rest of the, the treatment is actually quite tailor-made to you. So uh, I would have to go in for a consult. And then here comes the second reason I'd like to do Botox. Have you guys seen this one? These are, I don't know, my expression lines on my forehead and they're starting to stay. So now they're staying put even when I don't frown. You see this one right here especially. And that is the only thing that really annoys me. Plus the fact that my eyebrows uh, and my hooded eyes are sagging more and more with every year passing, every month passing, I'm really noticing a difference in my face and eye shape. Um, so one of the, <laughs> let's say, um, side effects of getting Botox for my headaches would be actually to have a bit of a, a brow lift and smoothing of this wrinkle. And uh, yeah, I'm still thinking about it. It's still something that really, really interests me uh, with the intent of, um, yeah, getting rid of my headaches, which uh, working from home usually was my solution for that. I would work, um, yeah, so how I managed the headaches so far was working from home two days a week, which meant working alone without anyone else in the team bothering me, no meetings, just me working on my on my projects. And that has changed now because everyone is working from home. So my work from home days are not safe anymore, let's say. They're not just for me to work from home. So now I'm feeling like I have minor headaches every single day just from being on calls all day and be having to worry for other people a lot, which uh, it's part of my job as uh, also HR in the company. But yeah, it's not something that um, helps really if you have a problem of um, overstress and you want to try to reduce that to a few days in the week. So on that side, I am of course working with my bosses to find a way, maybe blocking hours in which I cannot be reached um, and I can still work on my own projects. But yeah. Um, I am also very, very interested in uh, trying the Botox route. Now, on the cosmetic side, I um, I like the idea very much. So that a little bit tints or tinges or soils, how, how I want to say it, um, my wish for it only for my headache. So I don't know exactly if... If this Botox would have no cosmetic impact, would I do it anyways? So for example, I would love to have it on my neck because it really feels tight and I have to do stretches every day. I do yoga every day to minimize my headaches. Like I am trying to do all that I can to uh, minimize my headaches without like 
having to do uh, invasive procedures or there aren't also any like any other options to be honest I haven't there's nothing in liter medical literature that I could find. My doctors are doing this. As I said, the neurologist said, Alice, you just have to live with it your whole life. Um, my GP um, said that that was a very bad thing for him to tell me because it's psychologically very difficult at 32 to have a uh, chronic condition that makes you pretty much useless for quite a few days in the week or hours in the day. Um, so yeah, there are quite a few ramifications um, to that and I think the Botox could be very helpful for, I don't know, prepping me up psychologically to the fact that maybe I don't get any more headaches. That would have to be seen um, and also then getting rid of my, like, a little, just, a, you know, just if we can, while we're doing that, let's just also do this. Just a little bit. And also maybe making them even. I think this one droops more than the other. I don't know. It doesn't really matter too much. But of course, if I'm there and I'm getting like procedures done, I might as well, right? I might as well have it also a little bit cosmetic. I like the idea. By the way, this eye look went in every direction. Um, not so much in the beautiful, precise way that uh, Lisa Eldridge did it, but it's yellow and orange. And uh, the two shades I've used are Helios by Lethal Cosmetics and Psycho, that's the yellow, and Psycho, which is the orange. And I really like these shades together. And also just in general, these are two of my favorite pastels that I own. And in the video about the palette, I also did two other pastel looks but I didn't want to go again with the blues or the greens or the pinks I don't know it's not shades that I actually like to wear uh, those or I like to wear them but they don't suit me so well I look a bit like a clown with them whereas uh, not that the makeup like this is any better but I think people might accept this because it looks a little bit better on me since it's warm tones what I want to do is actually create a bit more depth because I don't have Cara's gorgeous big blue eyes and I need a little bit of help for that. So going back to the Botox, my question to you would be, what do you think? Have you ever had Botox done, for example? Do you like it? If you're in the Netherlands, do you know someone who did and do they have recommendations? Because I know of a few influencers who have it, like Caroline Hirons, for example, showed just recently how she had fillers and Botox, like baby Botox and fillers done to help, you know, just look a little bit more youthful. And uh, she referred to another influencer. She's, uh, I don't know what, I don't remember her name, but her, um, she's the author of the book Tweakments, uh, that it's, it's something that I'm actually uh, considering buying and it's a book on indeed all the cosmetic procedures that you can have because she had most of them and it's part of her job to try all of these new and upcoming cosmetic procedures. I think she's uh, a journalist by trade and um, she also gives recommendations on doctors, but in specifically in the UK. So it's not really uh, doable for me. There are quite a few clinics around me uh, in the Netherlands. Specifically, I see a lot of influencers using um, House of Bratz, like, you know, the Bratz dolls. And that also just the name of that doesn't really fall well with me because I don't want to look like a Bratz doll at all. I just want to know. Um, and it is also a, um, it's, it's a clinic that at least on their, on their Instagram shows the most, uh, lip fillers and jaw fillers and cheekbone fillers. And that's not what I want to do. Happy with my lips the way they are. Um, what I would like is in, as I said, just Botox. So I am uh, very open to learning from uh, uh, other people in the Netherlands what could be done and who to go to because, uh, yeah, I'm curious. I'm very curious. Now, 
Cara Delavigne has a pop of pink in the inner corner and this is a remission by Lethal Cosmetics but it may be a little bit dark. I don't know, maybe not. Maybe I can add a little bit of sorbet on top to lighten it out. Yeah, that makes it a little bit more pastel. I like it better. Also, it will all look better once I put some mascara on and define my eyes a little bit more still because right now I look just like a bit of a crazy rainbow person. Um, so yeah, I am looking for some help and um, recommendations on who to go to. As I said, House of Bratz doesn't, the, the aesthetic doesn't really appeal to me. The other one that is next to me uh, in, a, in my city is um, Faceland, which I've also been following a little bit um, online to see what they do. And they seem to be doing, again, a bit of, a lot of fillers and a bit of the rest as well. I totally missed in the makeup a little bit of like plumminess or, or more, dark pink out here. I thought it was orange instead it's pink. So I'm gonna do that now with Cascade by Lethal Cosmetics. And anyways, I'm not gonna get any of this done until this crisis is over, of course, because everything is closing down. Here, shops are starting to close and we'll see how that progresses. And of course, this is actually not really it's not urgent in the sense that I've been living with these headaches for a long time. So it's not like I have to go and do it now. But of course, I'd love if it was done earlier rather than later so that I don't have to be in pain for a long time. I have to say that my headaches have improved a lot in the over the years, uh, over the months uh, already since I started working from home a bit more when we were back in the office. That helped a lot. And then uh, what helps is uh, doing yoga every morning and uh, meditation helps a little bit. It helps me give me a break during the day. So if I have, uh, if I'm feeling really overwhelmed uh, or busy or stressed, I do try to take just a 10 minute meditation with a, an app called Calm. I used to pay for it last year and this year I decided not to. So I'm just using the free meditation that they have which is still working out fine for me to be honest. I decided that since I'm not going to look like Cara Delevingne anyways I'm going to apply a little bit of Cleona Cosmetics Sunbeam on my inner corner just to help open up my eyes a little bit. It's not pink but it has a pink shift uh, or a pink base with a teal shift, a mint shift. Oh my god I don't know or a green shift I don't know on this I don't dislike it and I'm actually feeling like I need more more yellow on my lid maybe even this is enough should I stay all matte I'll stay all matte for now let me continue on my skin I did my concealer I don't think I'm gonna do foundation because I already have my uh, tinted moisturizer and I'm not gonna go anywhere and I don't wanna wear foundation. So what I'm doing instead is taking my Nabla smoothing, close-up smoothing press powder. This has a little bit of color and it will increase a little bit the coverage, but it also has a nice smoothing effect. So it really blurs pores and I like it. It doesn't keep me matte all day, but then again, I don't have to wear this all day or it doesn't have to look good all day. <laughs> and it works for this effect that I'm looking for a very light coverage base. For um, bronzer, I'm using my Chanel Soleil Teint de Chanel. I'm actually really spoiling my March makeup routine, aren't I? I've been talking so much that my camera turned off. I have no idea where. So we're just gonna continue. I was just saying how um, I am not self tanning these days because I find it an extra step that is quite pointless for staying at home. And um, I don't think that taking care of yourself is pointless and I don't think you should let yourself go. Um, because you're not going out, especially like I live with my husband. I don't care if he sees me at my worst, but I 
also for the love of myself i don't want to look at my words all the time so uh, you know basic hygiene is important and i am due for a as you can see with all the white hair i'm due for a top up of my roots which i will do uh, in the coming days as well when i find uh, some time probably in the weekend i shouldn't move my brow while i'm doing my eyebrows um, and that also could be solved by getting botox done i really just drew a line randomly here underneath and the one good thing is that I'm not going to be touching, I'm not going to be going to another eyebrow lady to touch my eyebrows. So maybe I can get the, the Cara de la Vigne uh, bushy brows again since they were butchered a month or two, a month ago. I don't know when I went. Anyways, this uh, video went from a topic that I wanted to discuss to something that, I, that I'm just blabbing. Oh yeah, what we didn't talk about is cost of these of uh, Botox. I am very curious to hear your um, experiences, of course. I was looking at costs and a uh, headache treatment of, uh, with Botox or another botulin toxin, uh, because Botox is a brand, uh, and they were the first ones to make it, and there's, mer mer blah, and there's many different brands that make it nowadays, so depending on the clinic, uh, they will have a different... A different brand or uh, a different second brand let's say I think everybody uses Botox nowadays but they also have like other brands depending on uh, on the brand uh, the costs are, are different but I think I'm looking at around 250 euros maybe 300 euros for um, I think it's two or three zones of Botox so um, what they usually do is forehead uh, 11s and maybe something else what i would like to have done is uh, my neck possibly uh, back here i didn't know that but back here there's like so many muscles coming up here together that when you i press here when they all come together i am in so much pain i remember crying on the table of my um, of my chinese doctor when he would just put his whole weight on his thumb here to try to release it was painful it was very very painful Nevertheless, um, yeah, the price is going to be around that and I, I'm actually not mad about it because I think uh, for getting rid of my headaches, that is nothing or is very little anyways. I'm going to try something that my friend Cynthia on Instagram does, which is use Remission by Lethal Cosmetics, the shade that I used at the beginning in my inner corner as a blush. I have no idea if that will work. Um, because it's, it, I think it's very pigmented for a blush. So I'm gonna try not to make a mess, but I like the idea because then I can meet and merge a bit my eyeshadow with my blush. Seems to be working fine. And uh, yeah, as I was saying, 300 euros, to be honest, with the amount that I already spent going to these alternative medicine options that are not covered completely by insurance. Um, I was going to, in last year, uh, last summer, I was going to my Chinese doctor once a week and uh, for an hour. And then he was giving me uh, these teas that I was supposed to be taking two or three times a day, which I was doing because, you know, if you go to a cure you commit to it and you just do the whole thing you don't just quit uh, or do partially what uh, that so it was costing you costing me around 100 euros uh, or 85 euros i think a week and then the insurance only covered 45 of that so it was 40 euros extra a week and i did that for months in a row so i already spent way more than 250 euros that i would put into the botox so I am very tempted to do so. I haven't pulled the trigger yet because what I would like to indeed find is testimonials of people in the Netherlands that I trust and that I like the looks of because if I look on Instagram, to be honest, I just find very pouty, um, young 20 something um, influencers who uh, go and get their uh, pre preventive Botox or uh, their lips filled. So that isn't really, what I'm going for. So this look has gone also all sorts of places. 
And I'm not sure I love the fact that I didn't wear foundation because it all looks a little bit patchier. But it's okay, this works definitely as a blush. It looks much more patchy on screen than in person. Or in the, in the viewfinder, I mean. For highlight, I'm I am applying Daybreak by Makeup Geek, which is a bit of a cool toned, pinky peachy. <laughs> and it actually really pulls very much pink on top of the blush. But I do feel the spring. I'm gonna do mascara because otherwise I feel like I look ridiculous. And uh, even in my uh, Facebook groups that I, the makeup face group, Facebook groups in uh, the Netherlands, there are really only very young people. Uh, so I don't really know of any, of anyone doing these treatments for a medical or uh, a reason or just also not to look too scared like that. I'm afraid of that as well. One really big source of information for me has been uh, um, the Emma Guns show. So Emma has a podcast and she also has a Facebook group with a lot of, I don't know, adult women. Um, which is actually really nice. She also just turned 40 uh, last year, I think. So her audience is also a little bit older and they also want to have these tweakments done in a very natural and um, pleasing way, subtle way. And I think uh, that is the type of uh, people I would like to hear from in the Netherlands, but I really don't know where to turn. And I know not a lot of you are Dutch or live in the Netherlands, so... <laughs> I don't know that you can help me, but I can always put this discussion online and see how it goes. This looks so much better with mascara on. I feel less naked. For lipstick, I'm taking one of the Sephora shiny ones. This is the first one I got. I don't know the number. I think it's 13, but I, it's so tiny that I can't really read it. And it's just a shiny sheer lipstick. So here we have it. This is the finished look. I hope you guys enjoyed hanging out with me for this. Let me know down below all the questions that I asked you and uh, how you're doing because I am interested and I want to know um, if you want to talk. I'm here. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this lighthearted different uh, type of type of chit chatty get ready with me from me if you would like me to continue doing these during these weeks of isolation i'm happy to do one once a week or so um, and chat about different topics if you want to talk about different topics let me know down below i'll be happy to discuss and if you made it this far thank you give this video a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already and i will see you in my next video bye guys